Today, we are going to start looking at our next unit in art. For this unit, we're going to focus on learning on another day how to draw people so that they are proportional, using proportional people in a gesture or pose, developing a scene that has a foreground, a middle ground, and a background, by using four techniques to create the sense of space in an artwork and how we can combine both the people and the setting of our artwork to create a narrative or a story. Now, we're going to start by looking at this picture by Jean-Michel Basquiat called Cabeza. What we notice about this picture is it feels a little bit creepy or unsettling. There are a few reasons for this, but the one that I want to talk about today is we immediately get a feeling of sort of ghastliness or creepiness from this body. And the reason is it is very disproportional. We're able to tell without even knowing it when we see a person that is proportional. We understand that the body parts look to be about the right size and shape compared to one another. It fits with our brain's map of what a person's body should look like. This example, with an extra long, skinny neck that would break under the weight of this giant head, the head which is so big with gigantic eyes that are very dis misshapen or different, different sizes and shapes from one another, the lips and mouth, which are extremely wide and large, all of these are very large compared to what we expect them to be. Or compared to what they normally are. So the proportion, which is to say the size of the head compared to the body, the size of the neck compared to the head, is weird in a few ways. The arm, very skinny on the bottom, very big and triangular at the top, is another area where we see a sort of strange proportion. And we're going to talk about proportion in a separate exercise, but understand that for everything else we talk about today, proportional people is going to make a difference. Now, we're going to talk about how people use figure to tell story with their art. And we're going to start with an early example from about 2,500 years ago from Greece. This was painted on an amphora, which is a big clay vessel. This picture shows the story of Heracles chaining up Kerberos, which you may Remember, or you may know Heracles better as Hercules, the Roman version of the same stories, or mostly the same stories. At this time, everybody in the society would have heard the story of Heracles, but they would not have read, read the story ever, because they didn't use written words to tell stories. So they would tell a story, and artists, before writing the stories down, would also include pictures. And even at this time, the artists were using some things that we're going to practice as well. In particular, we notice that the po body pose, or what we call gesture, that Heracles is in, shows that he is bending at the legs and at his arms, his back is curved, his neck is bent as well. All of these show that he is actively doing a thing. Now, we wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that he's trying to chain up Kerberos, but we do see the chain. We see that he's obviously acting or interacting with the multi-headed dog. So you can pick up a lot just by what our eyes tell us. We can also tell that the Kerberos is behind this sort of pillar right here. That's because the pillar is overlapping or covering up part of the Kerberos. That is one of four techniques that we will use to create a sense of space, which we need for our middle ground, background, and foreground. So over 2,000 years ago, people were telling stories, people were illustrating stories, but they hadn't started to write them yet. Now we're going to move across the globe to Japan in around the year 1000 AD, 1500 years after that first painting, and we have what we consider the first written novel. We see some Japanese script up here that tell us or illustrate this scene that's happening in this story. This, the tale of Genji, 
is the first written novel. And even that had a lot of pictures. It used picture to tell a lot of the story and the words added to it. So pictures have been a crucial part of telling human stories for a long time. Now we also see that the screen door is overlapping this little lamp, which is overlapping uh, this man in the background. So that's using that technique to create a sense of space. And we also see one other method that artists use to create a sense of space. This woman who appears closer to us, we can tell because she overlaps this wall here, her feet or the bottom of this object start lower on the page. A little bit higher up, we see the, uh, the bottom of the screen and wall and door here. Above that, we see the bottom of this little lamp. Above that, we see the bottom of this man. So objects that are close to us tend to start lower on the page. And people have been using careful body Ac uh, careful, accurate body proportion, but also costume to really build an interesting story. Moving on, we want to talk a little bit about the importance of pose or gesture. So when we're talking about what a gesture is, we're just talking about the pose that the body is in. And the pose conveys so much for us. Sculpture might be a little easier to look at, so we'll look at a few sculptures right now. There's less background stuff to draw our attention. In this picture, we see that the figure, which is quite proportionally well made, the head size feels about right compared to the torso, compared to the legs. We do notice that the feet are disproportional or don't fit quite right. They feel rather small compared to how t big they ought to be. But mostly the proportion is good. And it allows us to also interpret an emotion which we see that this with the curved back arms that are uh, hugging around the same, you know, the person's body to protect themselves, their head resting on their knee. This person is not in the middle of an action. They might be sleepy, they might be sad, they might feel endangered. We get a sort of low energy pose from them. This sculpture made by an unknown artist of the Jenny people from Northern Africa. So if the body proportion were really wacky, we would not be able to understand the emotion that this person is going through. So it's important to realize that accurate body proportion and interesting gesture add meaning a lot. When we look at these other sculptures, both marble carvings from Italian Renaissance artists, we see that, again, the bodies are extremely accurate and proportional. They look very realistic, incredibly detailed, and lifelike. That accurate proportion is a huge part of making that effect, and it also allows us to get the sense of the looseness or limpness of the figure on the left-hand side over here, where his head is leaned back, the angle of the head compared to the angle of the neck and torso, shows that his head is sort of lolling, not really supported. His arm seems to be leaning and not having any strength of its own, as opposed to the woman whose back is straight and upright. Her shoulders are straight across. She has a strong angle between her head and her body. She is clearly doing something in the middle of the action of holding or supporting this man. On the right-hand example, the statue of David by sculptor Bernini shows the moment of highest action, and that is always an interesting moment. So here we see David is about to launch a rock from his sling at the monster Goliath. We see that with this wide footing, his strong angles in his legs, the arc in his back with the strength of his, uh, the angular appearance of his arms, all of these show that he's right in the middle of a scene, that he's right in the middle of action. The facial expression and the angle, the sharp relative right angle between his head and his back also indicate attention. So body position makes a big difference in how we understand the picture. 